Okay, I'm here, I'm here, I promise I'm here. Good evening or good morning or good day, everybody. I hope you're really well. If you're in Australia, did you have a nice dinner? If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, did you have a nice lunch? It's so strange. But um, we're all here together and for the next half hour I thought we'd do something a little bit different to what we did yesterday. And I've changed the set so we're now on pinks and different colours. So uh, I hope you like the quilt that's on the wall behind me. This is Manning Tree Garden. So a little bit different to yesterday. These are all very traditional English flowers. So I'll tell you a bit more about that later on. But what I wanted to do for you today was a little demonstration on our free tea cosy pattern. So if you go to our website, if you weren't with me this afternoon, go to our website to chandlerscottage.com. There is a whole section on free patterns and you will find there this pattern which is for uh, just a really nice simple tea cosy and we're going to play a little bit with that today. Uh, I do have the tea cosy here. I hid the tea cosy because it's blue and it did not go with the stand. So this is how your tea cosy will come up. But before we get started I would like just to stop and say hello to everyone. If I can just get the comments up and have a look and see who's here. Well good evening Jenny Miller. It's been so long. Good evening Diane. Lovely to see you. Hello Donna. You're still here then? At least it's a better hour now than when you were with us before. <gasps> Diane, I don't know. This flower is called a Bunnings flower because I bought it at Bunnings at the hardware shop. I don't know what it is but it is just so pretty, isn't it? It's going to be one of those amazing um, hybrid perennials that they bring out for spring. Um, I am very fortunate I have a trade card so I can get into Bunnings which is the envy of my mum and dad. Um, but I had the whole garden department to myself, the whole section. Nobody in there this week. It kind of wasn't much fun on my own I must admit. Um, hello Denise and Cecily. Hello Cairo. Where are you watching from? I don't know. Um, you can watch it again. So uh, Jenny Miller's grandson Flynn watches us on a Thursday and evidently when I blew him a kiss today he kissed the screen and I think that is so cute. So if you are watching this from somewhere else other than Australia or someone that's new to watching us on the Chandler's Cottage or Love and Hugs please say hello and let me know where you are watching from. That would be lovely. Hello Anna, lovely to see you. Um, Judith's here as well. Well I know where you are, in beautiful Yarram. But let's get started. So, if you weren't with us this afternoon um, on Chandler's Cottage, then let's just have a quick, just a quick revision of what we did today. And I'll show this to you on the overhead. So, move our little plant aside. This is the tea cosy. So this is going to fit just a normal medium size teapot but what I want to do with you is just make it a little bit more fun this evening. This is the pattern as I said this is a free download on our website so you've got a big picture of the tea cozy just some really simple instructions for you here and then this is the diagram so you're going to place this on the fold. Now as I said this is for a normal say about a four cup not even that maybe a three or four cup teapot but if you want to make one for a smaller teapot then just put the uh, the template into the photocopier and reduce shrink it down until it's at the height that is going to cover the top of your little teapot so you can change the size to whatever that you need um, <laughs> The girls today and I on the Chandler's Cottage Facebook page had fun and they will tell you I did not eat lunch before the show and I could not do my maths. They didn't actually, they didn't give me a hard time either so I thank them for that but hopefully I will get it right this evening. So, uh, oh, these are, these are the pattern, this is the pattern for that quilt on the wall behind me. It's called Manning Tree Garden. 
it's on our website so it's got I'll just quickly show you this while they're here you have uh, pictures of each of the blocks I have chosen to do mine with machine embroidery but if you want to do yours by hand by needle turn by stitchery you have full line drawing so you can use it for anything that you like oh wait let's go back see this one here do you recognize it this is the one that I did for love and hugs last year so this was my free stitchery that I gave you in um, to, to stitch out with all of the girls last year was that about March or April I think long time ago now a really long time ago okay so that's that one and then there is a manning tree garden too that's got another 12 I'll put this up for you later in the week in a few days time so you can see the other one so I'll pop those aside now what I was talking about today is how to take this really quite plain design um, and change it over so that we can add a little pocket on here and some details so I'll get that ready for you now what I was what I what I did today uh, which was a little bit mm, my maths was really bad but I was talking today about how to set up this template so that you can change it around and add extra details of it up oh, details to it so if you want to play with it instead of worrying about this actual curve the best thing to do when you're designing one of your own is to treat it as rectangle first I think I think it's time to move the flowers right let's just move the flowers down here for a minute just a just a little just a little bit of water on the mat okay so if you measure your actual tea cozy or the template and you can see mine is very well loved then the whole the whole piece just generously you want it to be probably about so 15 and a half wide so there's room for shrinkage when you're quilting it or when you're piecing it as well it may be just you know a couple of little mistakes along the way let's make sure that it's at least 15 and a half and then if I put my ruler up the other way 11 and a half is going to be plenty on the pattern that you're going to print out for yourself it gives you a little bit more it actually goes 16 to 12 but if you're really tight um, on how much fabric you've got a little bit less is fine I'll leave it up to you what you want to do so I had I had a texture so we want to have two rectangles for the front and the back that are going to be 15 and a half wide this is inches okay inches and then we want it to be 11 and a half high so if you know these measurements then you can do anything with it perhaps you've made a quilt and you've got strips left over maybe you've got a plain fabric and you've got lots of beautiful ribbons and things and you just want to top stitch them all on whatever you want to do you know that you need to end up with two pieces for the front and back of your tea cozy that is that 15 and a half width or 16 and 11 and a half to 12 high so that when you finish playing you can lay your template over the top and then cut it down to the actual shape that you need so I want to show you what we were doing today in that hole here's one I prepared earlier so what we did today we designed one panel at the back is going to be plain like this and then the other panel we've actually created a little pocket so that when our tea cozy is made up so when this is all made up we can pop in here if we're giving it as a gift maybe some uh, tea bags maybe a beautiful spoon to use in your tea caddy it's just going to be a little spot that you can pop something special into here and then I think you can just see I've drawn some lines on now these lines on the plain black which is at the back of the pocket I'm going to stitch these and I'm going to add some little flowers and that's the other thing I'm going to make with you today so we're going to make these little flowers that go on here 
So again, I want to just explain how we did this. And I'll flip this over. And I'll make sure I get my maths right this time. Now, I'll use a little ruler in here. Who's watching? I need to check. I need to check. Felicity, hello. Hello, Denise. Hello, Diane. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Uh, who else is in the building that I missed? I think I've got you all. Oh, hello, Cheryl. Um, I've got two Cheryls here. My Cheryl with a C and my Cheryl with an S. Cheryl with a C. Excuse it. Excuse us, everybody. I saw your emails. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but you got sent an email from the little private email address that we use at Chandler's Cottage for the team. So we haven't been using it since the new website. So that, darling, is why I did not see your emails. So I will reply to you today or tomorrow and we will fix all of that up for you. And I'm so sorry about that. Someone just it has accidentally used the wrong email address and you've replied to it. So I'm really sorry. Good. Hello, Gigi, wherever you are. I'm assuming it's somewhere really nice. Um, hello, Bobby. Lovely to see you. So we've got some new people, including my husband, I can see is watching at the moment. Is it Juliana? I think I'm, I think I've got it right. It's Juliana, isn't it? Yes. Yes. You've told me before. I know it is. And hello, Lorraine and Lois and Francis and Kay um, and Jean. Thank you. I'm glad you are enjoying the show, but it's early days yet. Give me, give me another 15 minutes. Sandy's here as well and Lois so thank you for joining me okay let's do the maths better do this so I'm going to get it right this time I want 15 and a half that way so I want to make this little pocket on here and I decided that four inches would be good finished so if my pocket I'll just draw lines here my finished pocket is going to be four inches then I am going to need to cut these pieces four and a half wide now the back of my pocket needs to be the full height of this panel so my back I'm going to cut it 15 no this is what I did today <gasps> it's 11 and a half high that's I nearly did it again and 14 four, four and a half inches wide okay ha oh, I got there right and then these two pieces that go on each side these to get out to this get out to our 15 finished this is also where I went wrong today um, because it got confusing with the height but if it's four I'm going to have 11 left so that means these are going to be five and a half on each side but if I add my seam allowance I'm actually going to cut them at six so these ones we're going to cut at six times 11 and a half high and that is going to give us, when it's all pieced together, the width that we need. Now in terms of this little pocket that I've put on the front here, this little pocket here, I ended up with mine. It's actually sitting at six and a quarter at the moment. And that's because I've already sewn a top seam on the pocket. So I actually cut these to six and a half high. You need two, okay? So you're going to need two. One for the front and one for the lining of the pocket. So for your pocket, you're going to cut two pieces. And they're still going to be four and a half wide. But they're going to be six and a half high. And you're going to want two of them. So, when you come back and have a look at this video again, well, it will be a video, I don't know, what do you call it? Live feed? When it goes to YouTube, what do you call it then? It's probably a video, a post. But after the show, we actually put it up onto the Lisa Chandler YouTube channel. When you come back and watch it again, or you pause it and you screen print it, this is the page that you're going to want if you want to do what I'm doing, okay? 
make sure you get a copy of that and then you've got the measurements but look honestly you can do whatever you want there's no reason you need to have one pocket you could have two you could actually have a pocket that runs right across right across your actual tea cozy um, and you could do a whole one right across the width and then put multiple oh I like that idea multiple little pocket divisions in to put all your beautiful teaspoons why didn't I think of that earlier so you could just layer up another pocket right across here and then when the pockets on vertical lines through like you would pockets on a bag and then you can pop all your beautiful teaspoons in along here ready to use with your teapot underneath I'm going to do, I'm going to do that I must do that okay so once you've got all of that ready you will take these two pieces and you're going to sew them together right sides together along this top seam and then turn them right side out give it a press and just lay it at the base of this panel that goes up through the middle so you, it's sort of going to be put all these together you might want to tack them you can see here uh, I think you can just see in there okay so it's all being wedged in my pockets wedged in between <clears throat> this center panel and the outer panels when I've sewn it all together really really quick and easy super quick and easy to do once this is done then you're going to add some batting to the back now I said to the girls today it doesn't have to be a really flash one this is a really strong firm tea cozy but only because it was a display for me to use for the shop if you've got some leftover wool batting some um, adhesive polyester batting whatever you've got that you want to use up I would use it um, if you are going to put more than one pocket like I've just said with the teaspoons in then yes you're going to want it to be firm but you could use your leftover batting and then if you've got any um, stick on stabilizer or something that's going to be that's going to be enough to use okay so we're going to go from that to something that looks really special like this as well I should just show you may I show you these because one of the reasons I did the tea cozy was when I launched my summer palace range I because I wanted to do the tea cozy we had little um, little placemats or a trivet you would call them made there with the same design on I'll just show you so we had these made and they've got a cork back on them so we've got these in lots of different colors and these are in the giftware section on the website so if you do want to grab your fabric and you can grab your matching trivet at the same time so that you can make them together of course you can make one out of fabric as well if you want to but you can actually match my fabrics up with uh, with some of our giftware that's in the gift section the same goes for I'll just pull this one down without wrecking everything same goes for this one so this is under the Australian Sun in our spring colors um, welcome <laughs> welcome to Australia everyone there is a big spring fly in my studio one warm day and now the flies <laughs> the flies are out <laughs> um, I will do the full Australian thing in a minute chasing him around the room trying to get him okay so you can see here that's the trivet and this is the fabric so it would be really nice to be able to make your tea cozy out of this so really pretty spring colors and then you can buy your trivets as well and a funny thing that happened today was I asked Stephen who's our son to put the summer palace uh, trivets on special on our website from $14.95 down to $9.95 and he didn't hear me properly and he put all the trivets on special so they're all on special at the moment um, until until Sunday night I didn't make him change it I said that's okay so it makes a really nice little present I think to do that so I I will use this um, and then for my other one that I'm going to do and then I think I will use a cream um, the cream that I'm using for the lining on this on on this one 
is this fabric and these are all on our website so this gorgeous thing but I think I might use this for my pocket for the back of the pocket so that's going to be my oh, let's go this way that's going to be my tea cozy that's going to be the cream where I've got the black on this one and then my flowers that I'm going to make to go on For the black one here in the oriental fabric I've got this beautiful Northcote shimmer now Northcote shimmer is a lovely coordinate and we do use a lot of it at Chandler's Cottage with my fabrics because I have a lot of metallic gold in mine but it's just got a lovely little speckle of metallic and it's a beautiful quality so I'm going to use that with this one just to pick up the salmon uh, salmon pink blossoms on there and then with uh, with my fabric that I've got here I'm going to use this which is my under the Australian Sun pink and I designed it you can see um, it's a it is pretty much a perfect match because they were designed to go together so that's what I will use for the flowers on the background of that so that should hopefully look really good now so I want you to have a play please have a play print off the pattern and really pull out the stash and see what you can make up you can have so much fun if you just start with treating uh, the tea the tea cozy not as not as a curve just treat it as a rectangle and have a lot of fun creating something what one word of warning just there's one there is one when you get carried away designing your own, here's what can happen. You will come through and add embroidery and lots of beautiful things all over it and then you will lay your template over the top. And look what's going to happen. You're going to lose this out here. So if you are using precious things or doing hand stitcheries or anything, maybe, maybe, just every now and then, come back and lay the template over the top and make sure that you're not wasting your time or some precious lace or beads or something in the bit that's going to be cut off now the bit that's being cut off it is also another option to use those leftover pieces to make some of these flowers that i'm going to do tonight so i've chosen to use a different fabric for mine but you could get there all of this ready trim down those sides and use the same fabric for the flowers you could do that too right so I'm going to pop this one out of the way for now and I, you can see I've got those little lines drawn on I think you can just can you see those there little stems um, I had a few requests this afternoon for uh, kits to be made up for people in these same fabrics that I did the demonstration with today which I will do obviously that that's not a problem at all I will get all those ready uh, get Steve to pop them up for us not a problem um, and when I do that I will also pop in just the little diagram of the shape of my stems that I'm putting on my pocket and I will also just pop in the instructions for these flowers that I'm doing these flowers if you are uh, in a quilter's life you will have them if you've watched my YouTube channel you will have them if you are in the Chandler's Cottage Applique Club you will have them Good evening, sorry. Good evening, Kathy. Good evening, Ruby. Hello, Ruby. Hello, Julie Jones. Hello, Kay. Or oh, Kay, you sound exotic and European with that surname. You must be. You must be. Le, I can't even say it. Le, I'm not going to try. But it sounds French. It does sound French. So, um, good evening, everyone. All right. Or good morning. Or good day. Or good afternoon. It's not bonsoir yet though. It's not that late. I'm going to put this away. Now, so these little flowers that I'm going to make uh, start with a pre-shaped circle. I'm going to pop this away safely so I can use it to finish off mine later. And these, I love doing these. I've done them over and over and I never get sick of doing them. I'm going to pop this one back up on the shelf. Oops. So we have room. There we go. 
There are lots of things on the market to use for making a yo-yo or a suffolk puff. And they are great, I will give them that. But the ones that are on the market uh, really rely on you having quite a soft, thinner fabric for them to work really, really well. So if you buy like a clover yo-yo maker, they're fantastic. But they work best with thin fabrics like a Liberty Lawn or something like that. My fabrics have a really high thread count. So that and they have metallic gold on them, so they are a thicker fabric. So they take a little bit more work to get them to manipulate them and play with them. So I use sandpaper. So I'll show you what I mean in case you are in another country and English is your second language. I will show you what I'm talking about because it may not be called sandpaper where you are. I don't know. So this is sandpaper. So for building, for sanding back wood or glass or walls for painting. So I just buy this at the hardware store, which mine's called Bunnings, and then we're going to make little circles with it, which we're going to use to pre-shape. Now, to get your circles, where's those two? To get your circles, very, very easy. You do not need a special stencil. You would make, perhaps use a glass, a shot glass, is a good shape and a good excuse to get the shot glass out. Same, you can use your cotton reel. This is a good one to have because then you always know that you've got your template with you. Um, that's going to give me, surprisingly, a smaller one. So you can use anything, um, smaller cotton reels for whichever size you want to use. I always find that if I want uh, what am I going to say? The size of the flower that I want, I need a circle that is twice as big. So if this is the size of the flower that I want, I need a circle that is this wide. So that is a good rule of thumb to start with. So I'm going to use one of these. Now I use these a lot, so I have a few that are already cut. I will also write on them, which I have with this one. Um, what I use them for so that I always remember if I come back to a project after some time then I know which which template I need to use. Then we need to cut out um, a circle from our fabric that we are going to use and it needs to be a generous quarter of an inch bigger than the actual sandpaper circle. So uh, when you come to cut these out, please remember to use your old scissors, not new ones. They need to be old. Good evening, Natalie Bird. Well, the boss is here. Good evening. How are things at Birdhouse Designs? Oh my goodness, she's watching. I better be good now. The founder and the creator and the instigator of Love and Hugs from Australia. There you go. We're in good company, everybody. Good evening, Bernadette. How are you? Snuck in after dinner. All right, so I'm going to draw this one on. What does this say? It says classic pocket tote. Now there's a bag we need to make a new sample of. So I'm going to draw my circle on. Just cut this down. Oh, update on the beautiful scissors. Aren't they just gorgeous? Update, we're trying again this week to get our scissors delivered. Um, I think I told you we had issues because the courier put the wrong code of what was in the box and it went all the way back. So we're having another go this week. Okay, I'll give you a little close up so you can see. So I'm just going to cut this out but make it a really nice generous quarter of an inch bigger. And this is going to be our seam allowance that we pull over the edge. Okay, there we go. So that's done. Now what we're going to do is gather up <laughs> Natty, no, 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 no. Natalie's watching so she can work out just, you know, what someone may have confessed they don't know what they're doing yet. 
for their for their two weeks of hosting. So I'm guessing she's just sitting there writing a list of all the beautiful things she's going to show us when Natalie's on, and I'm so looking forward to it. All right, let's uh, thread this up. Now I want a nice knot, please, at the end, and use a nice strong thread when we're making these, please. So a good strong machine or piecing thread and flip it over to the right side and we're going to do a running stitch right out on the edge okay And you don't want to gather this up now. I want it to stay nice and flat. And not your stitches do not need to be too small. I'm wondering if you can see that against my notebook. I'm like, oh, there's things in there. There you go. That's a bit better. There you go. This, these are lovely to make. It's a little bit like English paper piecing. There are a few steps, but a lot of them you can do while traveling or while sitting uh, in the lounge room in the evening. Okay, so we're all the way around. And then leave about two inches, um, five centimeters thread. We will need it again. So there you are. Now what we'll do, we'll take it back over here and we're going to place our sandpaper template into the middle use the thread and pull it up so it's going to pull it up around that circle so this if you haven't done this before look at that that is the way to get a perfect circle every time so if you always struggle to get one please try this method if you haven't before it's also really good for doing the top of your Dresden plate wedges, fans, any curves, clamshells, all of that. It's, it's fantastic for using for that method. So once you've got this gathered up on the right side, give it a really good steam press. I've just seen, I've been on my phone too much today. And Marie, stop! Just because you're my 790 buddy. Just because. <laughs> Alright. There we go. Look. It's perfect. It, this is the best thing to do. Um, there are lots of other flowers I'm going to show you over the next uh, week that start with this method. So we're going to pull this out and then just use that thread that's still there to pull it in back into shape, flip it over onto your ironing mat or your towel or give it another nice press and there you go. So if you need circles this is the way to do it and then that is ready for you to sew onto anything if you want to but we're not going to, we are going to turn this into a suffolk puff and then we're going to turn it into a flower. So we're going to grab our needle and thread again. I need a longer one. You are going to put a fair amount of pressure on this thread. So as I said, use a nice strong one. If you've got a hand quilting thread that matches the colour of uh, your fabrics, then that's perfect to use as well. So just thread this. Felicity Bonner is on at the moment. You can see her comments. Felicity Bonner is an amazing talented quilter from northern Tasmania. So from the island down the bottom of Australia, if you're not quite sure where everything is here. And um, her quilts will be featured in our upcoming Australian textile exhibition along with Eileen Campbell and Rachel Daisy. And we are doing a virtual show and it starts 
the last day that I'm hosting Love and Hugs. So leading up to it next week, as the quilts come in and our bag challenge and everything, I'm going to give you some sneak peeks. Okay, so the next step with these is flip it over to the back and take your knotted needle up under the fold. So it's right, right up here on the actual edge. And then we're going to do a running stitch right round on the fold. Now, don't make these stitches too small. You really want them about a quarter of an inch apart. And that's because we want this now to pleat up. Oop, pleat up really nice and tight like that. Just wait for it to focus. There we go. So you want this about, yeah, about a quarter of an inch. It's a bit challenging, girls, because the camera works in reverse. And I'm left-handed, I'm very conscious. I'm leaning over near the camera. But hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So just keep pulling it up as you go. If you leave it until the end, you won't get a really nice even gather. Uh, and it can be too, just too much stress on your um, thread. Okay, that's the last one. Now up until now, this is quite a common, a common way to do Suffolk puffs when you get them into the middle like that. What you do need to do, because of what we're going to do to it next, is you need to do some little tacking stitches just around those gathers in the center to hold it all in place. If you find that you get a little bit of the seam allowance kicking out, tuck it under with your needle. I um, We've got a new camera that we're setting up on Saturday or tomorrow night and that is going to allow us for you to be able to sit sort of behind me so this will be easier to show you. And in fact because of that I might bail on you tomorrow night and instead we're going to do a nice a nice early Saturday morning because we really need to get that all set up. And I need Rob's help. I need my husband's help. There you go. So that is our little Suffolk puff. And he is rather, he's rather cute. And you can just use them just like that. Um, there's a slightly bigger one on here. I think we'll make this too while we're together in, over this next week. So that is just a little pin cushion pattern of mine that's got some uh, 3D petals on it. And I want to show you how I do these if you haven't done them before. So we might, uh, we might do this one. But if I give you a little close up on that, so you can see that is just a Suffolk puff on there too. They hide so many mistakes and so many bad seams. <laughs> a multitude of sins, they come in really handy for lots of different things. Not just for looking pretty, they have, they have their little hidden um, secret uses as well. So yeah, we'll, we'll do those, we'll do those. Okay, next step. I want you to bring your needle up through the middle and then go straight down again. You're setting yourself up so that you can take your needle down through the centre and we're going to bring it up and over the edges. So we're going to bring it up over the edge and take it back down. Once you've got it down, give it a really good yank, good pull and go over the same spot again. So I hope you can see that, I think you can, so that it's pulling in the edge. Okay, so it's pulled in that edge. I'll go around now to the other side. I'm not going to attempt five tonight. I usually do five petals. I'm going to be nice and we're going to do four. So that means I can go to the opposite side of the puff and just pull it in with two stitches over. And then we can turn it. 
go up over this way. Up over there. And then one more around this side. I'm going to stop there for a minute though. Can I stop there? Just, I want to show you this because if I stop there, see I've got one big, one big petal at the bottom and two at the top. If you stop there, you are, you've got yourself a little pansy and I will show you um, some flowers off my applique sampler Saturday morning. Don't get cross with me. I know I promised every night, but the reality is I want to get that camera set up and it's going to take just a little bit of extra time. So we'll start off nice and fresh and early on Saturday. There we go. That, I'm going to stick it on my needle. Pop it in front of the camera for you. So that is one little flower. Right. Now, we need to have a look at where these are going to sit so that you get an idea of what I'm what I am planning. Where, where, where did I put? I folded it up. Oh, it's right in front of me. So as I said, I'm going to make one out of this fabric up here um, that I will use this pink for. You can use anything, anything. And if you've got lots of beads, get them out and put them into the center of the little flowers for a little bit of extra pop and it will be lovely. Okay. Lay this out. So I've got stems drawn on here. First of all, I could sit, if I was Natalie Bird, <laughs> if I was Natalie, I would be so good and I would sit down and I would backstitch or stem stitch, well me, I'd, back, I'd stem stitch, but stem stitch in some stems in here to sit my flowers onto. If I'm Lisa Chandler, hmm, who wants to get it done and get it done now, what I will probably do is while I am quilting this on my machine when I've got my batting underneath I will quilt in black or metallic gold just down through these or and then at the same time if I've got gold on I will stitch these with a triple stitch on my banana so that I've got my stems on and it's going to be adding the stems and quilting at the same time so I think that's what I will do to get mine done um, actually we were talking today Petra asked today if there's this is not my fabric I had one that's this design and I have it now in the ivory left so it's this is an oriental one and we don't have one a trivet that actually matches this fabric but this is uh, this is my summer palace trivet there you go. and it's not bad you see that it's not too bad we all decided today that we'd go out and buy new dinner sets to go with our tea cozies so that we had nice ones that matched. But I think that's not too bad. So that's what I will use with this one. So once you've got all of your stems done and it's quilted and you've actually got your tea cozy probably cut down to size, then you can come back and add in your little flowers. So my little flowers are going to come back and actually sit so they look like they are popping out of the pocket on my tea cozy. That's the plan. So um, I will get these done in for this one. They will be done in this fabric and I will be showing it to you before, um, before I leave you on the 14th. So we've got plenty of time and I will get this one done. I'm going to use this for here, but also I will use this fabric as well for the binding around the edge of my tea cozy. I think that would be really nice to have that down there and the gold for the lining. So there are just lots and lots of different things that you can try and that's just one. If you have lots of beautiful buttons or beads sitting in the cupboard then have a look at them and see if you can have them 
coming out of your pocket like they're on little strings or bows or ribbons or something like that just to add a little bit more detail. It is a great time of year to really get some sewing done towards presents for Christmas. Um, depending on where you are, and for us here in Australia, a lot of us are in lockdown at the moment, so we're not going to be going out into the shops and doing lots of shopping. We have no excuse but to sit down and make some beautiful presents for our family and friends um, over the next couple of months leading up to Christmas. Okay. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I look forward to seeing you. So I haven't asked Rob, but I think we're going to do it quite early on Saturday morning so that then our friends in the Northern Hemisphere maybe can watch it before they go to bed. So I'm going to be on. Have your cuppa ready. Breakfast in bed maybe on Saturday morning and I'm going to join you at 8am on Saturday morning. Um... I promise I'll be perky and awake with coffee. <laughs> but thank you very much for joining me this evening. Uh, thanks very much. If you've got any questions, please uh, send them through to me at our website at info at chandlerscottage.com and uh, please download your free pattern. And there are some others on there as well, including including my uh, pin cushion that I did when we did our Christmas special with love and hugs with our Christmas in July. So I've popped that in there too in case you missed it in the feed or right on the website. Good evening, good morning, good day, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.